What is up everybody, Crocodile King here, welcome to my second death battle reaction, Shadow the Hedgehog versus Ryuko Matoi from Sonic and Kill a Kill. Now, I know next to nothing about Ryuko, I have not seen Kill a Kill. I know quite a lot about, about Shadow though, because I've played a lot of the Sonic games, but I'm honestly not sure who to root for because again, I have never seen Kill a Kill, so I don't quite know how to stack them up. So basically, I'm just going to let the analysis do the work for me, and we'll see how it goes. Okay. The episode's up, we're all ready to go. Shadow the Hedgehog versus Ryuka Matoi. In three, two, one, now. Boom, 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 boom. Here we go. Shadow the Hedgehog, powerhouse of chaos and rival to Sonic. And Ryuko Matoi, the teen fighter in life fiber from Kill the Kill. They both may be tryhard incarnate, but when the chips are down, who is the deadliest edgelord of them all? <laughs> He's Wiz and I'm wow. Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a what death, death battle. battle. Here we go. Dr. Gerald Robotnik, grandfather to the Dr. Eggman we all know, had a problem. His granddaughter, Maria, was Maria. dying, succumbing to a neuroimmunity disease with no known cure. But old Jerry had a plan. When the government contacted him to yeah. build the ultimate life form, he figured its DNA could cure Maria no problem. So he took the job, and by studying the infinite power of Chaos Emeralds, with some alien assistance, he made the one and only Shadow the Hedgehog. Yeah, that game is Wait, original. Wait, did the government commission him, or was it Hot Topic? Favorite anime is Kill a Kill? Since when were hedgehogs so ultimate disease thing? curing life forms? <laughs> I mean, Gerald's prototype was a lizard, which God. sort of makes sense, as certain reptiles have regenerated. Okay, tissue. hold on. But then he went from this anime is kill a to kill? a hedgehog. Okay. Okay. I gotta find out where, where lizard, they got that hedgehog, squirrel, or whatever, Wiz. All that matters is he's super badass looking, super badass sounding, and is super powered by chaos. Literally, Literally chaos. Shadow's powers are directly tied to those of the miracle gem's chaos emeralds. He can tap into their power for incredible feats, similar to his blue blur rival. Likely for this yep. very reason, he actually possesses many of the same abilities as Sonic. You Let's know, the guy who's so fast he can almost outrun a black hole? Spin attacks, homing okay. attacks, spin dashes, etc. The works. But unlike his blue buddy, Shadow's not afraid to get serious and bust out some lead. Hey, Sonic, why use a spin attack when you've got a goddamn gun or a sword as big as you? Look at that thing! Look at that thing! He's used some of the same power-ups that Sonic's picked up, like heat barriers and magnetic lightning shields. Okay, but so he also has some equipment. unique gear all of his own. His air shoes are way cooler than Sonic's sneakers. They can boost his speed to match Sonic's and also Sorry. let him fly, kind of. He's even a got little. some gear attached that lets him attack at the speed of light. However, all of these abilities and, and equipment are mere accessories to Shadow's true power. power. The might of chaos itself. Even without an emerald on hand, Shadow can summon similar power. The biggest question is whether or not like Black Ryuko Tornado, can fend off his super blast, form or the deadly chaos long enough spear. To land a killing but blow. even though they totally asked for Doc Jerry to make Shadow, the feds got spooked and tried to shut down the project. And that's when things went bad. Yeah. Like, Really, really bad. bad. <laughs> Shadow was successfully sealed away, but in the crossfire, a life was lost. Maria. Maria. Locked up and super pissed off, Shadow had plenty yeah. of time to work on his angsty poetry, and Jerry had time to give him fake memories and a need for revenge against all humanity. Where do you think we're ever gonna find a scientist who doesn't go totally bonkers? I mean, what about me? Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> debatable. Okay. Well, since Maria was Shadow's only real friend, revenge seemed like a good idea, which was a serious problem considering just how powerful he is. He can yeah. teleport, <laughs> slow down, or even stop time, and Free even time travel crawl. a bit. And just like any hey. teenage boy, he's got some serious mood swings he doesn't like to talk about. Which can actually affect his abilities. With negative emotion, his raw power Chaos intensifies. Blast. With positive emotion, he gains more control. But when it comes okay. down to it, the government may have been right to worry. Shadow possesses so much power, even he can't always control it. Chaos powers are crazy. Sonic once used all seven of the Chaos Emeralds to literally rebuild the Earth. This is why Shadow wears inhibitor rings, which limit how much Chaos energy he can release at once. When he does remove them, what he loses in control is made up for by a massive increase in power, enough to match that of a whole Chaos Emerald. Hmm. What? What? What are you looking what? at? What? Is that a? Do you have a ring on your robot arm? It was a gift. Cool. Now good luck with that. All the rings I've given out to people always get sent back eventually. 
Anyway, uh, Spikey had so powerful, he teleported an entire space colony and even a giant asteroid. Plus, he's held back this huge space plant monster. And of course, yeah. tapping into the power of additional Chaos Emeralds, Emeralds increases Mass his power to unbelievable heights. By doing a tango with all seven, he can turn into Super Shadow. Now, without power rings, this form can't stick around for more than a full minute. But while he's golden, he's got super enhanced abilities, is basically yeah, invulnerable, like platinum, the gold. and he can fly. Base Shadows not only survived being shot out of a cannon, but he's just as tough as Sonic, who survived the space station Death Egg exploding right in front of him. Most impressively, as Super Shadow, he and Super Sonic were fired into Planet Aquarius, obliterating it. This would take over a whole exaton of TNT. So you've okay. explained. All this happened because after 50 years of Shadow being trapped, Eggman himself released him to conquer the world. Sonic and crew had to stop him from destroying all mankind, but really, he's so fast he'd wreck anyone's shit before they'd notice. Shadow has dodged gunfire and destroyed enemies without being seen, but his light speed attacks are stated as being exactly that. Light speed. Light speed. Almost 3 million meters per second. So Shadow's super strong and super fast. Makes sense he's a formidable enemy to just about anyone. Lucky for our heroes, they inspired Shadow to regain his memories of Maria, who actually wanted him to protect humanity instead of, you know, destroy it. He may everyone. have softened up, but he'll always be the edgy hedgehog we love to hate to love. Yeah. Understood. Initiating the mission now. Yeah, love to hate to love. That's pretty much... Thousands of, of years a lot ago, of people aliens that would come to be known as Shadow. life fibers crashed okay. to Earth. These parasites attached themselves life to the fibers. most intelligent species they could find, humans. And they even got humans to make them into clothes so it was easier for them to live on us and provide viewers with gratuitous fan service. Of course. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, the life fibers helped humans evolve more quickly and soon just passively survived as humanity developed. But some weren't content with such passivity, like Ragyo uh, Kiru, Ragyo. who had access to the original primordial life fiber that landed on Earth from so Persona. long ago. And humans are gonna human, so she and her husband experimented on that sucker like nobody's business. They attempted to infuse fibers into both of their daughters. Their first daughter was too old for the experiment to be a success, and it appeared that their infant second daughter was also a Ryoko. failure. So Ragyo just threw her away. Whoa, she wow. threw away her baby? Kinda reminds me of how my dad just threw away our relationship. Uh, well, fortunately for this Again, child, her boomstick. father couldn't stand by Ragyo's decision and rescued her, assuming the name Ishin Matoi, and raised this daughter himself. This yeah. Good is on you, man. Ryuko. Yeah, things were okay for a while, but it wasn't a picnic at the Matoi household. So Ryuko and Ishin didn't fighting. always get along, so he shipped her off to boarding school to fight other people so there was instead of him. When she too. finally came home, she found dear old dad bleeding out, impaled by a weird-looking sword. This was the first half of what would the become her blades. signature weapon, the Scissor Blades. In Ishin's last moments, he urged Ryuko to find whoever wielded the other half of the weapon, the one who killed him. Ryuku might not have known it, but the scissor blades were created by her father out of life fibers. They're actually one of the only weapons that can cut and destroy life fibers, which is important when your opponents are all using, you know, life fibers. Life fibers. I would say we take a shot every time we say life fiber, but you definitely you die definitely with. And do not try that survive. at home. Anyway, with the <laughs> quest of revenge and half a scissor blade, she started hunting down her father's killer. But she couldn't do it by herself, so she found a skimpy sailor suit to help her out. Yeah, here's that because fan service thing I was telling you about. This is Senkets, a living suit made from life fibers, also known as a Kamui. Now, there's plenty of clothing out there made with some life fiber, but a Kamui like Senkets is unique in that it's made of 100% life fiber. And yes, I said living suit. Wait, Ryuko, these assassins can't hear me! Oh, that feels nice. Yeah, that's not creepy at all. Not okay. just anyone can wear Senkets, as they have to successfully bond with him for the process to work. Lucky for Ryuko, she absolutely could, in no small part thanks to the life fibers infused within her body when she was an infant. Yeah, See, I was gonna Mom, guess you that was person, it did work. And when she and Senkets learned how to work together, there wasn't much that could stand in their way. He's more than just a sailor outfit. As a life fiber construct, Senkets can absorb other life fibers to increase his own power, allowing him to transform to gain new abilities. His Senjin form makes him super spiky, and his Shifu form turns mode. Ryuko into a badass fighting rocket. 
He's also able to combine both the Senjin and Shifu forms for more versatility. Admittedly, though, okay. each of these transformations comes at a cost for Ryuko as they're fueled by Senkets consuming her blood. This is most dangerous Jeez. in his Berserker form that occurs when Ryuko gets too upset and Senkets loses control. If not stopped in time, she could die from too much blood loss. But most impressive Damn. is when Ryuko straight up goes flying Super Saiyan and Senkets turns into his Kisaragi form. It's way more powerful and uses even more of her blood. What's the deal? Is Senkets a vampire? Well, a popular okay. theory suggests that it's all a <laughs> metaphor for puberty. Senkets pulling out Ryuko's blood is symbolic of menstruation, and the skimpier outfits visualize acceptance of sexuality and adulthood, except she's a teenager who already went through puberty. Wiz, do you have a daughter? No. I thought so. Good. At least having life fiber DNA means she has crazy abilities on top of Senkets' transformations, like insane okay. super fast healing. Basically, life fibers restore themselves so quickly that Ryuko's body starts regenerating before a blade has finished cutting through her. Unless someone is quick enough to cut through her body before this regeneration begins, she can survive almost anything. She's been stabbed and, she and sliced tons of times, including speed? completely in half, and even had her heart ripped out of her chest. Can we get this chick as the next guest character in Mortal Kombat? Box I mean, 30, you're taking basically anybody these days, so... Her strength is incredible. At one point, she had to blast a hole through a layer of life fibers surrounding the entire planet. Life fibers are stated to be harder than solid steel, so to pull this off, she must have struck with a force equivalent to over 650 exatons of TNT. Which oh means she'd boy, be able to take a hit that stream too. But with all these powers and more, Ryuko finally found her father's killer and completed the rending scissors. These swords can casually cut through skyscrapers and have some super forms of their own. Decapitation mode extends the blades for better slicing and dicing, while alumni mode makes them so gigantic they eclipse the freaking earth. What is this show? Next to Ryuko, yeah. one scissor blade is normally about two and a half feet long. Scaling up, the alumni mode appears to be about 1,017 times larger, weighing well over 3 million tons. If you have a pair of normal scissors at home, imagine lifting 50 billion of those all at once. That's what this is like. She can slice Damn. through 200 tennis balls five times each in less than a second, which us in the scientifically community call <clears throat> fast as f or 8,000 <laughs> times faster than sound. And she rocketed into the atmosphere in but less than 18 than seconds, which means her flying speed can reach Mach 500. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Why is everyone naked? Ryuko may not yeah. have had the easiest upbringing, but after dedicating herself to revenge for so long and yet saving the entire planet, she had become something unexpected, a hero. Let's go, I'm gonna slice your ass in half! Okay. All right, the combatants are set. We've run the I data honestly through all think Ryuko is going to win at this it's point because that Exoton feat that she pulled off is way beyond anything Shadow's pulled off. So, Shadow may have speed, but anyway. I'm going to vote hey, for Ryuko to win, up, but I'm rooting for Shadow. <laughs> Who cares? Ryuko, maybe we should... Oh, yeah! <laughs> okay. okay. Fight! I hate how they don't do that anymore. The Sonic Battle Sprites. This is gonna be one of those crazy assault battles, and I'm probably not gonna understand much. Chaos Control! And he can slow time to a crawl. Anticipating you. You should anticipate him instead. Uh, no shit, stupid! Okay. Damn. Let's get faster. Where are those damn chaos emeralds? No. <laughs> Oh, here's a sword as big as him, but... Careful, that hurts. Have a 
to regenerate. The question is, can he move fast enough? To if he slows out of time, he can probably hit her faster, slice her faster. Time to this. Behold my power! Oh man, the he's asking if he's performed this. Isanagi! He's asking if he's performed this early. I doubt he's gonna win now. Girl, Shadow was made to lose on death battle because he's been in this is his third death battle and he's lost good. both times. And super form is physically vulnerable. Chaos Spears. Scissor blade! Alumni mode! There's the alumni. But again. Oh damn! He broke through the scissor blades! Chaos Blast! Did that do it? <laughs> I'm the coolest. KO! KO! You know, Shadow actually won a death battle! Ryoko was wearing, but Shadow's been naked the whole time! <laughs> Armed with Senkets, her scissor blades, and her life fiber buffs, wow. Ryoko was definitely a match for Shadow at first. Yeah, with her awesome strength combined with her insane endurance, Phase Form Shadow was in a lot of trouble. But even then, it wasn't a surefire win for the rocket chick. Outside of his super form, Shadow never withstood anything on the scale of Ryuko's hole in the life fibers surrounding Earth. At her maximum power, she could have easily dealt a killing blow if she could catch him. Shadow could keep up with Sonic the Hedgehog, the whose race factor. against the black hole proves he can move over 260,000 times faster than sound, far faster than anything Ryuko's shown, and more than quick enough to slice through a life fiber before it has time to heal. Okay. Once the red and black hedgehog turned red and gold, Ryuko didn't really have a way to take him down. I mean, there Super Shadow's chaos powers use all seven chaos emeralds, which can all move pieces of the Earth around. Considering Earth's total mass and the speed at which each piece was moved, this would require exerting energy equivalent to 1.6 decillion joules, decillion? which translates to over 2,800 zettatons of TNT. of TNT. That's a ton of power, a <laughs> lot more than Ryuko's biggest hits. Even wow. one chaos emerald is enough to match Ryuko's best. And considering Shadow can match the power of an emerald when he takes off those inhibitors, he had better odds of winning even without going super. Ryuko put up an Damn. amazing fight, one for the ages, but Shadow's unmatched power and speed proved too much for our lady in black and red. Hey, he's pretty beat up about it too. Do you know what he said when he was asked what his favorite anime is? Uh, I like the one with the edgy girl and the scissor blade. It's canon. No, no Holy really. crap! In clothing, the Edgehog couldn't be overshadowed, and Ryuko's life fiber was snipped. The winner is Shadow the Hedgehog. Okay, I was right! I mean, I was right in my voting, but I was right that to episode Shadow. Of Death Battle. Okay. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe, click the bell so, so you're notified next, about though. more videos, and in the meantime, watch one of these videos by clicking a box down below. There are but okay. Who's next? Lex Luthor? Who's he going up against now? Doctor Doom. Okay, so it's so it's two characters that have already been in death battles because Lex Luthor went up against Iron Man, and Doctor Doom went up against Darth Vader. But now they're pitting them both against each other. I'd have to say that on the surface, I think Doctor Doom stands a better chance of winning because the one thing that hurt Lex Luthor the most in his battle against Iron Man is because Kryptonite can be great when used on Kryptonians, but only okay against everybody else. And if Doctor Doom could beat Darth Vader, I think he could beat Lex Luthor. But, eh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. But, that was a really good match. Uh, I didn't really understand that much from Kill a Kill, but it was pretty cool to see Shadow finally win a death battle. So, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.